All righty, y'all. Welcome back to the Technus Corner. I'm your host, Sabluka. And what are we doing here today? Well, all things CAT Ethernet cables we are. In relation to this, it's just going to be a basic introduction into what essentially is a vital part of everyday networking and our internet infrastructure especially when it comes to us on at the very least the home level and once it's the internet is pretty much entering our premises and where we are connecting from regarding our modems hubs routers switches and everything inclusive unless for some reason you're on fiber well if you're already there different story y'all you may as well move on up a tier because this won't be for you that being said thanks for joining us at the technus corner my name is seb luca don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's go learn some shit. let's go all righty so we just had a bit of a moment blackout. So come back to where we were at. Uh, essentially, just received a package, you all. And cut a long story short, it's upgrading what is a deteriorating Ethernet cable, okay? And or not necessarily upgrading, but replacing. But before we get into that, we've got a couple of uh, examples here. One over here. Well, we're going to discuss the different types of Ethernet cables and help you determine which one is suitable for your needs. Whether you are wiring your house or simply purchasing cables for regular use, understanding the different categories and their capabilities is essential to avoid unnecessary expenses and complications. So understanding Ethernet cable categories, y'all. Ethernet cables are commonly referred to by their category, often abbreviated as CAT. Let's explore the most common categories and their capabilities. So over here, we've got ourselves what is a, in comparison to the next one up, shall we say, okay, similar looking in almost feel, except I can feel a little bit more sturdiness on this cable here, as opposed to this one that feels very flimsy, okay? Okay, so we'll start off with the flimsy one. This is your 5E gigabit networking cable okay 5e and you can see that usually they're rated and it says the first thing in the line of many different numerals and whatnot like 26 awg which is the lower the number the thicker the cable essentially it's 26 is round standard for and generally acceptable but 5e gigabit networking cable cat 5e is the predominant and widely available ethernet cable it supports gigabit networking and can handle 2.5 and 5 gigabit connections under shorter distances though. Suitable for residential and small scale networking needs, can run a one gigabit connection up to 100 meters. So a lot of people got this uh, running through the houses nowadays. I would suggest uh, against this, I would suggest even against the next level, two levels up, and try to future proof yourself in this day and age where everyone is essentially hopefully going to get fiber to the premise and at some point it will be just a given and then we can deal with our networking structure from there with fiber hopefully it should just be a standard but it's not so in the meantime we're dealing with 5e cabling and we're throwing it out it's worthless okay but it's not if you've got it and it works and you cap, you know, you've got a speed that you're downloading at and whatnot, and you're not capping over it. There are no problems regarding bandwidth because you've got a saturated cable then, and you don't notice anything, then you probably don't need anything better for the time being. So don't worry about it and don't stress too much. Okay. That being said, our, our next cable, I would say is your cat 5e sorry i apologize y'all that was a cat 5 cable i lie this is a cat 5e cable the sturdier one after all and let me just verify that so 
The reason why I know this is a Cat5 e cable, this is one of the telecommunications companies gave it bundled with one of our modems at some, at some stage. The red side signifies WAN, wide area network. So you stick that in the WAN point. The yellow side then goes to the device. That's something that means absolutely nothing. I don't know why they've done that. Um, it's borderline. What's that word? Presumptuous of us being stupidity, um, stupidity much. But look, if it helps you, it helps you. Both sides should be identical in essence. Although that's not always the case with all cables. So that's something to consider as well. But with that being said, I'm still looking for the numero. Also, another thing, this cat cable is rated to 75 Celsius. They get hot when they get pushed, okay? As opposed to that cat cable, that flimsy one, which I pipped away, it's only rated to 60 Celsius. That's something to consider, y'all. This again is 24 AWG, so it's thicker copper pairing that's occurring inside the cable. And to cut a long story short, normally harder to manage as well. And verified, finally, this is cat 5 E, okay so this is essentially the first grade of what i was referring to that's what you should consider so understand that other stuff ain't even going to get you your chicken dinner man you know what i mean especially if you're ordering you know uber eats all the time good luck on that sort of line okay so that being said that moves us on to the sweet spot that we probably say and that's cat six cabling okay cat six cables are flexible moderately easy to work with and a popular choice for many users they are suitable for most networking needs and provide a good balance of performance and ease of installation capable of running 10 gigabit networking over 55 meters y'all recommended for general home use unless longer runs or future proofing is a priority for me everything is future proofing nowadays um if it only costs me an extra five ten dollars more for a 50 meter 100 meter run i'm getting the cat 8 guys and that essentially brings us to cat 6a beyond 10 gigabit networking cat 6a cables are a step up from cat 6 and designed for longer runs requiring 10 gigabit networking they can transmit 10 gigabit data over the full 100 meters of cable length however they are thicker more difficult to terminate and harder to work with in tight spaces. Consider CAT 6A if you have access to the studs during installation and require longer 10 gigabit runs if you're wiring over the whole house, okay, y'all? And that's where you will be wiring with that sort of a cabling uh, involved. CAT 6A is that probably sweet spot, I'd say, where other people would recommend that CAT 6 is the nice sweet spot. In this day and age, CAT 6A, all the way on the other hand this is a cat 6 cable and these are really short okay and that's why the they'll get the full 10 gigabit on this distance if required they're a little bit thicker they're not as malleable but that you can you can almost sense sense the uh rigidity in relation to some sort of uh standard that's gone up a level you know what i mean um, and that's essentially what's happened. Speaking of standards, CAT7 cable. Why do I not have any? Well, it's a non-standard option. CAT7 is not an official standard recognized by the Ethernet convention. Okay, it offers faster transmission distances that, than CAT6A over longer distances, but lacks industry-wide certification. Not recommended for regular use due to its non-standard status okay so you know you don't want to use that sort of stuff you don't probably ever want to mention that you're using it because someone will be like well it's because you ca your cables you know go to six go to six a and then it will be working properly then we can in, we can check your stuff and it's not your internet on your side you know what i mean but long story short guys give cat seven a a skip and just skip a generation if you can the more people get on the cat eight boat the Cat 8 boat. The more people that get on Cat 8 boat, I've been on that boat for a few years now with some of my stuff as I've been intermittently changing them over and whatnot. But people say it's excessive for consumer use. Cat 8 cables are incredibly thick and have dense shielding to handle extremely high transmission rates. Speaking of a Cat 8 example, that brings us back to our old Amazon package that we've got here. 
And I'll tell you what, it's a tech, 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 tech corner unboxing time. Well, unpackaging time. Let's open this up and let's take a closer look at a Cat A cable without actually dissecting it and just emphasizing the points on it. Let's go. Oakley dokey. And you know what Network Chuck says? Shout out to Network Chuck. When you're talking networking, you got to need caffeine and coffee. Mm. Love myself a good cuppa. DeLonghi, Brad Pitt, or was Brad Pitt or George Clooney? I'm not sure. I don't have a DeLonghi machine. Actually, we got a really old one. It's like busted three times and it's getting to that stage that if it busts again, you can't afford the good coffee anymore. So it's going to be back to the old uh, Nest Cafe. But honestly, secretly, I don't mind it as long as I get my jollies. But unfortunately, it does taste like rat piss. So that's why, obviously, I've got that sort of uh, affiliation with other things like Cat5 cabling. So in turn, where have we gone? Well, unboxing time at the Technos Corner. Another, I'm not saying overclocked on tech, but overclocked on caffeine. We are, and there's our specialist unboxing tool of the trade for our, what shall we say, is a neat package that looks like recycled paperish for a change. One problem, y'all. I'm expecting a set length in this cable, right, of about 10 meters. And honestly, it doesn't feel like there's 10 meters worth of cabling in there. But something surprising about it is one thing you want to look out for when you've got cables which have to be certified. Something that can put you at ease, at least if the manufacturer and all the seller has got it specified, is a fluke test, okay? So once they've been fluke tested, they're rated to a set level and found to pass that level. So CAT8 again is that standard that we're looking at, but to get a closer look at what we're dealing with here, let's have a look. Oh my Lord, back to front action happening. Top quality and services. Your satisfaction is our first priority. Excellent day. Eh? Got all the right certifications on the premium cable, ethernet cable, HDMI cable, data cable, none of them are ticked, so that's concerning. Got some additional clips, and yes, I know I'm stalling, here it is. And does it specify CAT8? One moment, y'all. Alrighty, so we got ourselves a CAT8 cable. And just to verify, CAT8 Ethernet cable, 10 meters black, okay? And it specifies it's new, made in China. Now, the thing about this was, it was, also, you may notice, a little bit special because it's flat. And that sometimes aids, especially when these Cat A cables, and I've got an example, which is currently plugged in somewhere. It is plugged in, yes. They are, they essentially become quite thick boys, okay? And that's uh, something to look at. Um, like I said, Cat A cables, okay? They are not necessarily for most consumer applications and can cause more complications than benefits sometimes, okay? CAT6 cables can fulfill the same function as CAT8 for the next decade or more is what some people would lead you to think. But if you are at the cups of getting a 6A or 6 cable, honestly, go to CAT8 route, okay, and route, okay? At least to the source of the device specific, okay? Um, if you're running these through, um, and also people say they're not practical for everyday use due to the bulkiness and compatibility issues with standard Ethernet ports, I'm yet to suffer from these problems myself. Okay, with that being said, uh, compatibility wise in relation to bulkiness, it's flat. They haven't bothered putting that effort into those other cables, which means, you know, when this goes underneath a rug or something, it's not going to get trampled like the 15 meter Cat 5E cable I got over there, which is eventually worn and worn out. And hopefully this will at least stay flat upon stepping on. Okay. So that being said, let's open this up and have a look. Mmm, that smell from China. Okay, what do we got here? We've got some zip ties as well added into the fact. More needed for the other ones and also some little latches that allow you to uh, pin it down essentially. 
pin these down along the walls and whatnot, depending on where you're popping them. And just remember, it's not only the amount of speed you can get, okay, which is 40 gigabit, by the way, with Cat 8, okay, not 10 gigabit. It's also the amount of bandwidth. So Cat 6A, I believe, has 600 megahertz capabilities. Cat 8 has 2000 megahertz capabilities in relation to that bandwidth, okay? And that's like a depth of uh, amount of space as opposed to how fast something goes through that space. Get me? 2000 is better than 6000, okay? Um, and then 600, I beg your pardon, okay? But on the other hand, considering the pace of technological advancements, it's important to balance future proofing with practicality when choosing an Ethernet cable. Here are some factors to consider. Cat 6 is currently sufficient for most consumer needs and can handle emerging 10 gigabit networking, depending on distance, of course. Cat 6A provides extended 10 gigabit capabilities, but is harder to work with and more expensive. Cat 7 is not an official standard and offers limited benefits over Cat 6A. Cat 8 is excessive for most consumers and comes with compatibility issues and unnecessary costs, okay? Fiber optics, on the other hand, cables provide the ability to run 100 gigabit and 200 gigabit networking, offering scalability and easier installation than higher category copper cables. So, y'all, in conclusion, uh, when selecting an Ethernet cable, it's crucial to assess your specific requirements and strike a balance, I'd say, between performance, ease of installation, and cost. For most users, CAT6 cables are the recommended choice, providing a solid combination of performance and manageability. CAT5e is suitable for basic gigabit networking needs, while CAT6a should be considered for longer 10 gigabit runs, provided you have a means to handle its bulkiness and higher costs. But with all that said, future-proof yourself. If you're lining up your houses as well, CAT8 all the way and jobs done for the next God knows how many how many days in this space that we all live in. That is The Matrix. My name is Sub Luca. Thanks for joining us at the Technos Corner. Hope you've learned something. Hope it's made it a little bit easier for you to uh, dissolve all this additional information that you're probably going on the roller coaster about finding out. This was just the iceberg or the base part of that journey. And yeah, peace out. Bye.